is Connor. Today, I'm gonna to be putting coilovers on my C6 Corvette. I'm gonna be replacing the leaf spring magnorized system that's on it currently. And I'm gonna be installing a Viking custom coilover kit that I spec'd out for the car. Um, work, you know, close hand with them. Got a lot of inputs from other companies um, that we work with on parts. And uh, went ahead with the Viking shock. So let's go ahead and take a look at those now. So this is just a quick look at the shocks um, in the spring. So I went with a 650 pound um, spring right in the back and then we're gonna run a 600 spring right in the front. Um, the coilovers from Viking uh, come disassembled. So you do have to have some assembly uh, required and some basic knowledge on how to you know put these things together and install them in the car. This is a front, um, I believe. I actually forget, I gotta find out where these mounts go, but um, yeah. There's the front and rears, so these are double adjustable. They have, um, you know, your compression there, your rebound there. Um, what's awesome about this kit, um, unlike others, is they actually give you a spec list um, for the dialing system on the uh, on these Seed Berserker double adjustable recommended settings. So for cruise handling, tie down weights, um, you know, weight transfer, all that stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this stuff assembled. I'm gonna put the jam nuts um, for the height installed onto the shock bodies, put the anti-seize on it as required, uh, put the mounts together. I got these, I guess I'm gonna call them Clevite um, style, uh, full swivel mounts that are gonna get put onto the car for the shocks. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get all these assembled. Um, I got the car uh, on the ground now. I went ahead and measured all four corners, um, this time just from the ground to the fender um, in a straight line right across the axle. So my right heights initially were 26 and six quarter, 16 in the front, which is just 26 and a half, 26 and a half. I'm using 16 just to make the math easier is um, I can know how much to go up and down. So we started there. The goal is to drop it, uh, let's see, an inch in the front. And I'm gonna drop it an inch and a half in the back to get to 27 uh, from the ground to the fender and 25 and a half from the ground to the fender. So let me get this thing in the air. Uh, we'll get the suspension out. I'll do a quick video on that. And then, uh, yeah, get the new ones in. All right, so I messed up the process. Initially, I started taking off the lower uh, jam nut for the lower control arm uh, where the ball joint goes in there. You actually instead need to unbolt the uh, upper control arm. So take off this mount, take this mount off, and then just take uh, the tie rod uh, ball joint off. And then uh, once it's loose underneath, you can see I have the leaf spring unmounted uh, to the chassis. Uh, you just simply take those three points off this will fall back and down and then you're able to flip the leaf spring around and then pull it out one side which i'm going to do now all right so got the other side loose just like you see it here i really don't like stuff to hang like this but boom come both and that's your front spring what a piece of crap fiberglass garbage all right time for the coils to go in all right, so boom, there's the sensor. It's the sensor for it. Tentiometer, if you want to call it that. Got it unplugged. I'll plug it back in here in a second, but just need to get that nut off, and then the shock will come out. A pair of pliers right on that stem. Not supposed to do this, but they're drunk anyways. Boom, that little bit of holding was enough to let it loose. Not pull off that down. Nice. And that's that, man. We're going blown out freaking shock. Garbage. So I got the side all loose. Just got to drop the shock out of the top mount. Uh, it's the same thing again. Got to take two out top A arms off, the tie rod, the ball joint. Um, leave the bottom ball joint on, you know, disconnect your sensors and your brake lines and your wheel speed sensor line. But here over on the driver's side, got the coolant reservoir in place right over top of that nut right there on that connector is where we got to get off. So we'll go ahead and take off this 10, this 10 right here, pull the reservoir out, loosen up that nut, drop the shock out. All right, so it's the next day and uh, finished up the front end of this. Um, next video will be of the, the rear coming out, but uh, yeah. Got it all mounted up at the top. Got this, uh, I guess it's a Clevite, you know, solid adapter. Um, so it's a full swivel joint. So this bolts to the chassis where it ears off of the frame body uh, right there. And then uh, just comes down and bolts, you know, right the lower there. So original mounting points, this is just an added, uh, so, you know, you get to use less shock. 
but it's a full swivel. I mean, this piece is awesome. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Driver's side over here. Same thing, uh, kind of a pain in the ass getting these bolts out and back lined up. Um, but yeah, we made it work and uh, had to basically put all the camber in it in the front to clear the sway bar here. Kind of nicked up the spring I'm mad about, but um, in order to get this space um, from this not touching the sway bar in the spring, I had to basically max out the camber. So I have the eccentrics all the way negative in the front for now. So we'll align the toe to correct for that. But yeah, um, the whole process was just going back together, just bolting these top a arm points back in bolting the uh, shock you know through the uh, body on top bolting it back all right so we got the front leaf spring out now we're going to get the back leaf spring out so it requires you to take the lower control arm off of one side um, so barely got to unbolt all the steering linkages the sway bar um, got to disconnect the shock absorber from it and then uh yeah i'm just going to drop it down on these two points on the chassis Come out, I'm gonna take this wrench and jam on it from the back side. Use that to pull it out. We gotta just counter hold the stuff for it. Oops, not let it slip off. Connect all the sensors, so got the shock. Already disconnected on the magna ride. Oh, the back of that. Little wrench. If you don't have one of these, get one of these. If you don't have one of these, don't do this job. Or use a floor jack, but. All right, so that spring's tight right now. So with the jack under it, now I can let it down easy. And then boom. That's the leaf spring. That was quick. A lot faster than the front end. Front suck. Look at the bushings on that. Those are garbage. Those are trash. It's just a fiberglass POS. As we do call it. Cool. Well, the next step is just to get the shocks out. And then uh, we get the shocks out, get the new coilovers in and then uh, put everything back together and uh all right so i got the leaf spring out i just wanted to show getting the actual magna ride shocks out so i disconnected the sensor from itself it's still grounded on the chassis there but uh yeah you just disconnect this and then since you took the lower control arm apart that was the lower you know mount point and then you just have the top mount which is just these two 13 mil bolts right there that go straight through i don't think there's a nut on the back side run those out nice and quick i'll get that later feed that harness back through Boom, that's easy. And then uh, we'll do this to the other side. But uh, it comes out pretty quick. Time to get the new stuff in. End it. So another point to point out, uh, this is obviously the old shock that came out of it, but if you see the all the oil and grease that's on the body of the shock, it's even covering up the, the part numbers. This is an old Delphi, um, you know, Magnaride shock. But if you lift it up, you can see all the oil inside the shock shaft and uh it's just basically blowing past the piston seal inside the body and the car just rides really rough you know whether it's in touring mode or in sport mode um so it's best just to trash this thing and it was the same cost to get coilovers as it is to replace this so i'll show you guys the new setup here all right it's the next day now so went ahead and put the lower control arm back on um all i have to do is uh assemble the coilover and then we'll mount it into the car. I already did this on the other side. 
So I wanted to make sure I knew how to do it, what was going on. Um, bit of a clearance issue between the axle there and the spring. Again, you just gotta put more negative camber into the lower control arm and raise up the spring uh, perch a little bit. Uh, but all in all, it's a good piece. Got the swivel joint up top there. Uh, it's all mounted into the factory setting. It offsets one way, so when the arm swings out, it's even. Um, got your double adjustables right here on the bottom. Compression rebound. We'll set those up for the street and then change them to the track later on. Bolts to the factory mount on the bottom. Uh, and it sees up the threads. And uh, boom, it's all mounted in. This thing's about ready to go. And uh, don't mind this stuff. We're going to change all that out anyways. But yeah, you can see it paint marked everything. You can see the... Uh, Rotated the eccentric, put more camber in it, lined it up. Um, yeah, bolted everything back together. Now just to go ahead and do this on the other side. I'm gonna go and compress this down uh, just to shorten the length of the whole assembly. Make it easier to get it in. I'm making sure that it... Uh... So the long side right here of this mount comes out towards the outside of the car. Slide this up, through, down. We'll lock tight the end of this too. Pretty much lock tight everything because I don't want uh, anything to back off. Alright, so just to end the video, got the coilovers all on, got the ride high set exactly how I wanted it, dropped it about, I don't know, an inch and a half in the back, inch and a quarter in the front. Um, the alignment was super off, so I went ahead and threw it on the machine. This is where we're at now. So, uh, man, when I put the coilovers on, it was undrivable. It was horrible. Uh, the car wouldn't track straight, had the incorrect thrust angle, everything. So, we're sitting pretty low, and we're sitting pretty correct. We've got about two degrees in the front. Uh, negative 1.3 in the back. It's a little aggressive, but I'm taking it as a track. So, man, it looks awesome. It rides super good. I'm definitely going to give a, an update on the review of the ride of it, man. But the quality is awesome over the leaf spring. I mean, 100% worth it. And it looks sick. Feels great. Um, so far, I love it, man. Man, so thank you for the long video. Uh, yeah, it was a long one. It was a two-day trip. And uh, you guys stuck around with me through the whole thing. Uh, appreciate the, uh, the support. And uh, I'm going to keep putting out content like this, man. I hope you guys like it. Uh, keep beating this thing up. Keep uh, putting parts on it. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys. Thank you. Bye.